Hey everybody, it's your girl, Charlotte Van Horn with Black Expats in Panama, coming to you live for the first time since we started doing this from Panama. As some of you know, this is my first time back since like um, March of last year. So I'm really happy to be back. I'm really happy to do my first interview. I'm back here in Panama with Tito and Francis Cisnet. And uh, they are new black expats to Panama and we just wanna meet them and welcome them and hear about their um, experience so far. So hello and welcome. Hi. How you doing? Why y'all like, Charlotte, why you gotta be so extra? Just calm down, y'all like, wow. <laughs> Thanks for having us here. Thank you oh, very I'm much. So, I'm so here. happy to have you here. So. Tell us, um, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit um, about you and how you decided to um, to move to Panama, to become a Black expat in Panama. Well, it's, for us, it's a kind of a long story. I don't know if T wants to start or not. Tito is actually from Panama. Uh -huh. and, and I'm um, originally from New Orleans, but grew up in LA. Uh, we, we own in, uh, we, raised our kids and stuff in uh, Southern California, mm -hmm. in Town Island. And uh, in the effort to get to know Panama, we went back a couple of times to visit and took our kids off and on and they liked it. And this is what, as they were grown. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and so I was just following him. <laughs> yeah. My, you said my you used story. to follow him? Huh? You said you used to follow him? No, I said- Stalker. I Ah. <laughs> no, not at all. So that's what you know. My husband is a returning Panamanian too, and I've yes. just followed him everywhere. So I'm just saying, yes, yeah. I followed him here. I followed that's him. Right, Go with your man. Uh -huh. Okay, well, Charlotte, like your husband, I'm a returning Panamanian. I left when I was 18 years old after graduating from high school. And came to the United States and pursued education and job, career, and everything else, and raised a family. And then after they were grown, started coming back. Amazed by the changes in, in, in the city, it's especially with the skyline. Um, you know, just, just the things that have changed from when I left. And um, I said, okay, well, maybe we'd like to come back more often. Mm -hmm. And we decided after a while, somehow or the other, we figured out, you know what, we want to come back and we would like to have a base in Panama for the kids to enjoy for the foreseeable yeah. future and for when we're gone. And that's where we decided that we were going to purchase something. So when you started coming back, when you started coming back to Panama, like around what year was that? Oh boy. Um, I'll say I remember, I remember it took me four decades to come back. Wow. Oh, three decades to come back. Yeah. 30 so, years. 30 years. So okay, we so the, coming back, um, uh, we started our first trip, I think, was maybe about eight or eight years ago. Okay. We stayed for a week and then okay. we went back. And then four years later, you know, we came again, stayed for a week went back, you know, at each time we bought one of the kids or something like that to see. And then by the third time we said, you know, this is kind of nice. And the fact that where Panama is, is a hub. Yeah. So from coming from LA area and flying to Panama and then say, going to Jamaica or go to Aruba, it's, it's easy. I mean, Aruba is only an hour away, you know? So we thought, well, maybe we did that. We could come and stay and use that as a base. You yes. Know? So but, tell me this. So, I mean, I'm, I'm asking you, Francis. So when he used to talk to you, did he tell you a lot of childhood stories about, Tito, I ain't talking to you right now. Did he used to tell you a lot of childhood stories about when he was growing up in Panama? He used to tell me something when I met him. And he's like, I'm from a little small town, a little small town in Panama, Paraiso. And, you know, to me, a small town was Inglewood. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. I did. Until I went there. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. It is truly a small town. Like, you know, maybe 500 people. Wow. Like, See, I don't know if I've been there. Oh, it's beautiful. It's right wow. Out of town. 
it's just lovely. And that's the other thing we liked about Panama. It's just, it's just so beautiful. I mean, living in Southern California, which is a desert, everything's brown. Everything there is green yeah. mm -hmm. and grown in it. I mean, their trees are like our bush. I mean, our, our you know, are like they're huge. You know, there's mm -hmm. monkeys and butterflies, and, and it's so diverse. It's so yes. Diverse. From the beaches to the mountains to the interior, it, you know. It's something, I always say it's something for everybody. Something for everybody. That's right. What I was, the reason I was asking that question was because from the stories that Alfredo told, I didn't know anything about Panama. I just, I mm -hmm. just didn't. And from the stories, Alfredo grew up in Parque La Febre. And just from the stories that he told growing up, I just completely yeah. expected dirt roads. And <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? He used to tell them Bill Cosby stories. Like, you know, <laughs> I had to walk 10 miles to school. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but to me, and, and he, 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 of course he didn't say that, but it's just like his experiences to me, I could not imagine Panama being as developed as it was when I got here. And of course he, he took, he didn't come back for several years either, you know? So mm -hmm. he was gone a lot too. First time I came here was 2004 and I fell in love. I was, I was totally amazed that by how developed, you know, everything was. And I, I always tell everybody I'm a suburban chick. So I like mm -hmm. being close to everything. And um, so, okay. So then you guys, you know, we're coming back. And then, then what happened? What yeah. happened then? Well, I don't know. We decided when we decided that we would come here and, and see about getting a place or maybe even living here. Um, Tito was saying, you know, as he was growing up, most of his circle was just Panama City and Paraiso, mm -hmm. but there were other parts of the of the country that he didn't he didn't get a chance to visit. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at um, a friend of ours told us about uh, a relocation tour. And we thought, well, well, maybe we'll do something like that. And uh, when we looked at it, they were going to areas that we've not seen. And it would give us a chance to look at all the different places around uh, Panama mm -hmm. and see what we would like. And, um, you know, it covered everything. We wouldn't have to drive. We wouldn't have to get a, a tour guide. Everything was yeah. there and included. So that worked for us yes um, so we booked it mm -hmm. and then COVID hit <laughs> oh okay okay um you know so COVID hit and so it got canceled and then we three times it three times wow by that time all that time we were thinking okay well, where would we like to we we're still thinking where we'd like to go and okay. being that we both uh, that I grew up in the city and that we like the beach areas. Uh, mountains are okay. We don't live far from the mountains. We spend mm -hmm. a lot of time skiing and stuff. But um, we thought maybe going to Coronado. We heard about Coronado, that it was close to the beach. There's a good expat community there. And so we were just looking at all the different, like Coronado, Gorgona, you know, San Carlos, that area. So we looked and looked. And then lo and behold, there came up with this property that, look too good to be true. And we're like, this can't really be for sale for this. You know, it's like right on the beach. It's well done and everything. So we we went and um, uh, we met Mike. And the way we met Mike was um, through um, the, the location tour people. They do a web, a web uh, thing every month. And we were on that and that's how we met him. And then we, we actually saw the property on the internet and contacted him and said, is this for real? And he- And Mike is with Inside Panama. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm, I don't want to butcher his last name, but it's- Oh, butcher. girl, I, I, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because I'm not even attempting. <laughs> His name is officially Mike with Inside Panama. Yes, yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Mike V. Mike V. Mike V. Okay. Yeah. All right. We can do that. But he was very nice and very helpful for us. And he went and went and looked at the property for us. He went and he was our our hands, our eyes and feet on the ground for us. Because we're here, we were in, you know, Cali and couldn't get down there. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Don't so do that in public. You're not allowed to cough and sneeze, no. <laughs> You better be glad you're home, girl. No mask either. I I'm messing with you. <laughs> it's a new day. Yeah. So, so go ahead. 
So Mike went in and put an offer in for us. And unfortunately, the, the seller didn't want it, didn't accept it. And so we were like, okay, well, that's fine. We'll be going on this tour whenever this comes up. Well, then like two months later, here comes, there's another, well, not two months. It was just a, a, just a week, just a week <sighs> later. Um, the realtor for the previous, that other owner said she had another property in the same complex. Yeah. And so asked, asked Mike if we might be interested. And so he told us about this. Sure. We'll, we'll look at it. And we, and y'all were still in the States. Yeah, we're in the States for the, for the, for the holidays. We, we actually were coming back to Panama on Wednesday. Okay. Um, but um, he went and did a video for us, went through it in and out, looking in cabinets, doing all, and showed me, and he goes, you know, this is really not a bad place. In fact, I like it better than the other one. He said it's, it, it had been closed up for like seven months, mm -hmm. you know, and because nobody could get there. So it had a layer, a little, you know, but the mm -hmm. phones and everything there was just like, wow, they put good, quality stuff in the house. For, oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Just just to, just to um, fill you in on, on how valuable Mike was. Um, Mike, for one, he spoke English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two, um, he had a working knowledge of Spanish also. And his wife was also a valuable resource. And he Martha. was very valuable in explaining to us the ins and outs of purchasing properties, how how the purchase would grow, go and the steps that were taken. And one other thing, he had an attorney yes. because every transaction in Panama purchasing a property deal with an attorney, we yes. found out this attorney was very fluent in both English and Spanish. Uh -huh. Now, not just the regular Spanish that, or English that, you know, everybody can, you know, cobble together in a moment of stress. She was fluent in English from a legal uh -huh. Aspect. See, see. So she was able to explain a lot of the terms and translate uh, from Spanish uh, to English because I know regular Spanish, mm -hmm. but I don't know legal Spanish, lawyer Spanish. That is a good, that is an excellent point to make, especially about, you know, knowing the, 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 the legal terms and to be able to translate it in a way that you will understand it. And not only that, when we um, purchased our home in, in Panama, we purchased uh, in 2012. Um, we, you know, originally we didn't have an attorney, but for mm -hmm. me, you know, Alfredo speaks and, and um, writes Spanish. There's someone, sorry. <laughs> um, Alfredo speaks and writes Spanish, of course, but I don't. And I just was so uncomfortable because I was like, what's going on? And then Alfredo yeah. would have to translate it to me. And I'm like, Okay, but but what if and so and so I told Al, I said, listen, you know, and then plus you're making this transaction. I don't know about y'all, but we had never purchased anything internationally. Yeah. I'm sorry, hang on one second. Hang on one second. Okay, so I had to get my lips together right quick, but now I'm back. And the intelligent point that I was making was that I was very insecure about the process anyway. We were financing and I used to be a mortgage broker. And for everything that I knew about um, uh, mortgage loans in the United States, Panama was, it didn't apply. And because really the way that we bought our house could have never happened, could have never gotten through underwriting in the United States just because we weren't living here. And it would have had it been done a whole different way as far as like investment. We were able to buy a property as a primary residence. And so that was different. And so when I realized how different it was, I became very insecure about the process. And I said, Al, we need an attorney. We need an attorney. So we did the same thing. And I perfectly understand, you know, what you mean. And not only did the attorney, because we were building. And so not only did he, you know, was he um, fluid in, in um, English and able to break everything down to me and, and make me comfortable about it. He came and he watched our house being built and he took pictures. I mean, he took pictures, he took foundation pictures and everything. And so that worked out very well. So I just said all that to say is you and you make a make a good point. The attorney that you have is important. And what was so good about that was you didn't have to find one. You know, a friend of ours, um, a family member here happened to know this guy that we used, but you were able to do everything through Mike. 
like one-stop shop. That's a big deal when you're doing something for it. Especially when you're doing it out of the country because we couldn't get down here. So we mm -hmm. literally saw our place sight unseen. I think you saw it the day before we closed. Yep. The day yes. before we closed, we were able to go, he was able to go down and do that. But you're right, you need an attorney. Mm -hmm. You need someone who's knowledgeable mm -hmm. and to use them. Don't it's and because it's totally different. And when I go back to Mike. Mike, not only does he know real estate here, he was a real estate broker in San Diego for like mm -hmm. 15 years before he came down here. So he knows about real estate anyway. Yes. So it, very, it was very, very helpful that we, we connected with him. And like I said, he was our, our eyes and our feet and everything on the ground for us. And I would highly recommend him. And his, his wife, Martha, does property management. So she mm -hmm. does rentals. Yes. So it's like, there, and when we came, this is this is how nice it, it worked out. When we came, the the old owner was kind of like he didn't want to hand over the keys just yet, and so we were on our way down here, and he was saying our keys wouldn't come till that Monday. I was arriving on well, Friday. Mm -hmm. Martha, I said we had no place to stay because we hadn't planned that. Martha says, "Don't worry." He said, "She says I've got bunches of places you can. I got a studio you can stay in too." Mm -hmm. for the and don't worry about it. Now, see, that would not have happened here in the States. I would have been trying to find the, you know, a hotel or something. or something. Thank you, or something. But she stepped up and said, don't you worry about that. We'll take care of that for you. You can stay with us and or stay at, the, you know, at this place. It ended up we didn't have to. Yeah. But, you know, that stressor was off our mind because they, they took care of it. Well, I also, the thing that strikes me about your story um, is that, not only was this a new type of transaction for you, you know, it was a foreign transaction. Um, mm -hmm. you, you were, you hadn't seen the place. Now, let me backtrack. Had y'all have been to Coronado before though, right? Had you ever, or were you planning on going to Coronado when you went on that tour? We're planning yes. to Coronado. So you had never been to it. Coronado, because that's where y'all got your place, right? Yep. Right. That's what right. happened was um, the year before, we stayed at Playa Blanca or Playa yeah. Bonita next mm -hmm. to uh, Royal De Cameron. And we stayed, you know, we, we were um, attending a family reunion in Panama City. Mm -hmm. And then that was one of the trips that we made. And that place, that water was just wonderful. Yes. It, the beach was just great. The food at the hotel was great. Oh, yes. I mean, just the drive-in and so forth. So I'm like, okay, if you want to live at the beach, fine, we'll do that. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing, was, I to, the thing I like about, you know, being a suburban chick that I am, the thing I like about Coronado, too, is that it's not that far from everything else. Like, exactly. You decide, because there's a lot that happens in the city. And, yeah. you know, when I used to come here, um, you know, with my husband, you know, initially it was just, we just did family stuff. And when we started stretching out and got our own place and meeting other people, I'm like, Panama is popping, you know, because mm -hmm. my family, they're just content to be together, period. <laughs> you know, um, a good time is sauce, surreal, oh, yeah. arroz, can pollo, food is great. Food yes. is great. And it's so interesting because um, being from New Orleans, like um, the first time I made red beans and rice, he says, I know that. He says, my mom would make something like that. We had that brand of, of, of beans, of camellia, camellia red, red, red beans, beans. Wow. In, in Panama. And I said, well, that's what I grew up with. You know, so the foods and seasonings are very similar. Not the same, but they're, they're, the food though. So yeah. you guys eat meat? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so do you eat pork? Yes. yes. Okay, chuleta. Yes. Let me mm. tell you something. After <laughs> I had, look, let me tell you something. After I had my first pork chop in mm. Panama, I have never been the same. You know, I used to cook pork chops at home regularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, I feel like as far as the meat here, the pork is just the best. I just think, oh my God, it's oh, so delicious. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you find that too? Yes. We found a little place in, in Coronado that serves the pork chops. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. It was so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, Grace. I'll, I'll chime in on, on that too. Uh, you know, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buy a Marshall Bill. Buy a Marshall Bill. <laughs> <laughs> But but my mom, the way she used to do it, she we used to get the pork chops that were thick, and my mother would would cut like a little pocket into the into your pork chops and stuff it with seasonings and herbs and so forth, and then put like a light coating of, of, of flour on it and fry it on both sides, yeah. and then you put in some water and you make like a little great gravy and steam it, and it will come out so soft. Oh my! Gosh. I cannot understand how people in the United States, just throw the stuff on there and, and fry it and it comes out hard and everything. Yes, no. yes. My, I never had a hard chuleta in my yes. life until yes. I came to the United States yes. and then I showed her how to do it. Wow. You know, make that little gravy and stuff and put the onions and all that yes. stuff. Yes. Feel good and you can oh my God. Eat. You don't need a knife to eat my <laughs> <laughs> The food is delicious. The food yeah. is delicious here. So let me touch on one more thing, and then I want you to tell me a little bit more about your place. But okay. you said that the place had been closed up for seven months. Yeah. I want you to tell the people what that experience was. So did somebody come in? So you saw it because Mike went in. But yeah. what I what I tell people and what I what I learned here is that this is a tough the, the maintenance here is serious. You know, the maintenance, keeping up with um, your property, keeping that mold away is serious. So tell me what the place was like as far as the condition after being closed up for seven months. Well, um, how can I say it? It wasn't as bad as it could have been. Mm -hmm. um, the living room, like in most places here come with furniture mm -hmm. and they had a big leather couch, like a sectional. And the sectional had mold. Yeah. But that was the only thing that had the mold inside the house. Okay. Outside the house, in our backyard, I think, I, and I forgot to tell you, I sent you some pictures. Oh, um, thanks. Our backyard is like limestone tile. I mean, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. But limestone is, is porous. Yeah. And this is a tropical country. So unless mm -hmm. you clean mold no. will grow into that. So there was yes. a lot of spots in the backyard. The whole yard was full, but that just took some pressure washing yeah. and clean that out. And, you know, and inside the house was pretty good, except, you know, you have like a layer of dust or grime mm -hmm. that's just yes. kind of hard, you know, so getting it clean professionally and getting that done is, yes. you know, a priority. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I do like to say that because I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was just saying the house had good bones and it had good um, like cabinetry and, and fixtures and, and things. So those things weren't ruined. So you didn't go with a condo. You went, you went with an individual single family home. Well, it's a, called a, it's a duplex. A duplex. Okay. That's what we have. We have a duplex here. Yeah. So it's a duplex. One, one thing that I'd like to add, Charlotte, is that um, um, electronics per se those tend to suffer a little bit also. Not so much maybe like a TV or anything like that, but anything that has to work with contact, like, you know, like remote uh -huh. they're gone. So we were able to find, the home came with TVs and four TVs mounted on the wall and none of the remotes worked. <laughs> and the ones that, that kind of flickered a little bit, when you open it up, batteries were all they corroded. Were but they were, so yeah, we rusted. Have, but Amazon is your friend. You can find <laughs> a remote that would work with those TVs and a lot of your um, stereo appliances or anything like that on Amazon. Yeah. And they're fairly cheap. Yeah. So, okay. So I think that's a good, that's a good point to make. And I think it's like, I mean, I think after we learn these things, it just seems like, okay, that's what happened. But for people that are watching, they're like, wow, you know, things to think about. The other thing that you just said that I think people will be wondering about is you purchased the home, but it was furnished. So you yeah. purchased a furnished home. And was the other homes that you looked at furnished as well, or that, that was the other home that was presented, was that furnished as well? Most of the places here that you rent or buy, they come with furniture. 
Unless oh. you buy it brand new from buying it like it's brand new. They just built, nobody's ever lived there. Yeah, yeah, that was our experience. But uh, most places, I'd, I'd say 90% of the places come with with all the appliances and furniture. Now, whether you want that furniture or not, you know, yes. that's if, it's, another question. if it's your style, you know, that's yes. a question. But um, it, it came, ours came at least with some good solid beds and, he, you know, and we were able, you know, to get it together for us to use. But you right. know what I think is- got rid of the couch. <laughs> but, what's, but what's so good, what is so, this is so good. I'm gonna tell you why. Because when you're moving from another country, it's not like we're moving to another state where we're going to have movers take our stuff to, you know, bring, we're going we're gonna to meet y'all there kind of thing, you know. And especially now as people are looking to move because of COVID and things like that, our shipments may be delayed um, for their furniture arriving. So just knowing that that's kind of the norm, I did not know that. I did not know that. So just knowing that that's kind of the norm at the way they sell houses, because, you know, in the United States, you only know what you know. And you know, in the United States, you ain't buying nobody house and they leaving their furniture. Because yeah. first of all, you got all your own furniture, number one, that you're going to bring to the house. And second of all, it's like the style may be different. They need their furniture to go somewhere else, right? So they usually taking their furniture and they might have some one funky piece and you'd be like, can we include that? <laughs> but <laughs> other than, you know, I mean, so that, that right there, I did not. I did not understand. When I see the pictures with this, like, because of my mind, it's in the States. And when I see the pictures and the houses are for sale and they got furniture, I'm just assuming it's like in the United States. They're just showing you what the house looks like with these people's stuff. When you get in, it's going to be empty. So that right there is good to know. Because yeah, that's yeah. a help. That's that's a burden on somebody named right there. Yeah, somebody right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. It makes it a lot easier when you're moving in. Then you don't have to to transport all your furniture and so forth, but always check to make sure, like I said, it's like 90%. And most of the time it's written in that you, the furniture is included and they'll say, except um, their personal items and artwork. That's and you need to make sure yes. that they spell out what that is. Yes. Okay. Because okay. they can consider personal items most of the furniture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But most of the time, seriously, it does the, the furniture. We just need to make sure that that is stated in the in the contract. But most of the time it's just it's like standard. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So all right. So then so then when you decided, so when did you actually come and um and buy the house? Did you say it was October? Well, let's see. The country November. opened up in October. Yeah, we went in November. Of last okay. year, of last year. So, um, and that was interesting too. Um, but that's another story. We had to come separately because I had to take care of transactions in in the states to yes. transfer the, some of the monies down and so forth. And yes, um, this is something people might not know. Wells Fargo doesn't really have good terms in banking with Panama. With Panama. So if you're gonna <laughs> don't don't use Wells Fargo Chase. Chase better. Yeah. Much better. So yeah. they don't Wells Fargo don't, doesn't have relationships here. It, it have relationships, but for they would not let us transfer the money without one of us being in physically in the branch at right. that you, time. That's because Wells Fargo is shady. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. They got a rat, honey. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's yeah. interesting. So make sure, so that nugget is make sure that, you know, that your, your banks, your bank uh, will, funds will be accepted. Right. And oh, transferring of the money and everything that, that can be, you know, that, that can be tricky too. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's important to know that you're, I mean, Wells Fargo will do business. But they're just very tight in making sure that it's not like they told me, well, we want to make sure it's not going to illegal purposes. And so they needed to know who I was, why I was spending it. Yeah. All this stuff. They, they asked all these questions. We've been there for over 20 years. Bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and interesting. That why I couldn't be present. I couldn't be present for the closing because it had to be done. The money had to be transferred as it right when they signed the papers. So he was in Panama closing. I was in the States sitting in the, the banker's office, you know, to do the, the to do the transfer. 
Oh, okay. So, all right. I'm, 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 I'm just catching that. So you had to be there when the transfer was being done. Yes. Because, wow. Because the, the reason why I came, one big reason why I came and which facilitated a lot of the uh, transactions was because I'm Panamanian and I have a cellula. So with that, they go, oh, okay. You're, yeah, and then, you know, they kind of like yes. don't scrutinize it quite as much as if it were done with a foreign passport. Right. So yeah. I had to be there. I had to show my national ID, the settler and everything else. I got to sign and so forth and, and notarize all the papers that were necessary. And I spoke Spanish, so I could speak to everybody in Spanish. Okay, yes. Yeah. That's, that's I could speak. That's I could a speak, so I spoke to Wells Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't speak English. So like <laughs> well, our, our situation was different. We financed. And okay. with financing, um, you know, uh, it was a lot easier for Al to finance as well. It was, I think, I, the, what was the word I want to use? I think that it was a lot, um, it was a lot more convenient mm -hmm. for Al to finance as a resident, as a citizen. Of Panama, because yeah. at that time I didn't have my residence or anything, um, and so that that worked out just fine. One interesting note, you know, I, okay, I tell sometimes about my cousin, my uh, cousin, it's Al's cousin, but it's my cousin too. Um, here in Panama, he said to me, he said we were trying to get our cable hooked up, and when I tell you that cable, well, the, the cable, we were trying to get the name changed on it. And when, because um, it was in his, his father's, anyway, we were trying to get the somebody off the account, and and and, and it was it was an act of Congress, y'all. I was so, whoo! I was like, get my children out of here! I was so <laughs> done with Panama. I was like, are you kidding me? We had to go to all these places. The, and the, the cable place was under like lock and key. You had to go through a security gate to get to the cable company. Now, mind you, this was several years ago, and hopefully it's gotten a lot better. Then we had to get papers notarized. You had to go to a notary um, place, went to the notary place, and, you know, took a number, got in line. We went to that. Let me let me make sure you caught that. What I had just said was we went to a notary place. And when I tell you we went to a notary place, took our numbers, took took took, took a number, made a seat, and Alfredo came back because everything's in Spanish. I don't know what's happening, right? And I said, well, what's going on? And he said, none of the notaries are here. Oh, God. I said, it's a notary place. You mean to tell me it's a notary place and every notary went to lunch at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mama, my cousin gave me the best people. advice. I know, I, I know. It's people. like, oh, my Lord. Man, man, baby. It's a, it's a, oh, it's a, yeah, Viva Panama. You Let me tell you, my cousin Greg gave me advice that I am sure added years to my life. He said to me, Cheyenne is my nickname. He said, Cheyenne, he said, everything you know about the United States, forget about it. He yeah. said, this is Panama. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hence the T-I-P, this mm -hmm. is Panama. Mm -hmm. And really, that was the best advice anyone yeah. could have ever given me. I'm sure not only moving to a far, not only moving to Panama, but moving to any foreign land. Of course, yeah. you know what you know, and that's what you know. But mm -hmm. this ain't that. And it just goes back to when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a little better with it now, but that was trying for me. Yeah. That was that was trying for me. So that's something that people have to be made aware of. So tell me, you 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 built you went moved into the house in November, and you're still kind of transitioning. So you you're in Coronado, and you haven't had a chance to meet a lot of neighbors yet. Not yet. Um, where we're staying is basically it's one of the how can I say it was one of it's an older property. But it's like one of the ones that had um, one of the originals, originals. and then had a lot of Panamanians that lived there. A lot of Panamanians still live there, mm -hmm. but they usually bought those homes as as holiday as for weekenders. Holiday, for weekenders, so they would yes. come 
stay in the city and then come in for the weekend. So our neighbors, a lot of them come in on the weekends, but because of COVID and travel restrictions, they haven't. Yes. And so we haven't had a chance, like I said, to meet them because we came in November. Mm -hmm. Then we left at the middle of December to be here for Christmas. We're in yes. California now to be here for Christmas. But we're going back, like I said, Wednesday. So hopefully we'll be able to meet some of our neighbors there. But I understand from being on, on um, the group with Black expats, there's folks all around us, especially Black folks. So yes, I'm forward, honey. I'm looking forward to meeting. To you, meet. gotta, you guys got to hop on the Zoom. I announced a Zoom call yesterday okay. so okay. we were gonna do we were gonna do a get together we were gonna try to do some kind of meetup you know i just I, it was kind of tentative because we just kind of had to see what the requirements and restrictions would be and everything like that but you know because we're not we're supposed to be getting some re restrictions lifted on the 14th it's too close and i just said let's do a zoom so we're actually all going to, you know, I invited people to come on to the Zoom and just at least, hey, I'm I'm so-and-so, this is where I am, this is what I'm doing, to put a face to the name and a voice to our ears. And so we're going to do that on the 16th, and you'll see that um, on the page as well. So when, you, so when you got there, is your neighborhood, does it back to um, a beach? How far are you from the beach? Um, um, half a block, not even half a block, 500 yards really? maybe. We don't, uh, I, I, we don't, we can't see the waves, but at night, well, I can, we can hear the waves crashing. Wow. Um, it's a gated community, so we yes. feel very, it's nice, we feel safe that we're there. Um, it's just, there's a lot of green, greenery behind us. It's like an empty, empty, Lot, yeah. empty lot come behind us so there's like a lot of animals and those big vulture birds yeah. <laughs> there's a couple that just comes every morning they say hi how you doing and they and argue, they, argue. Like, they look bad look at that so um I, I really like it it's good it's a lot of families that are there there's kids and uh, we have some grandkids with one coming on the way oh and congratulations thank you mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to bringing them. And there's a playground. There's a little. There's tennis courts. There's That's pool, awesome. And you can just and a private access to the beach for for our for our complex. I can't wait to see the pictures. Most oh. of the people that I know, we had an uncle who had a a, a, a single family home out there, and it was like a, a little walk to the beach just down the road. And he was somewhere in Coronado where the sand was black. Yeah. Uh, yes. He was they had black sand. It's yeah. black and white. They okay. call it black and uh -huh. it could be black one day and parts of more white because the volcanic sand, which is the black part, uh -huh. washes in at night and they mix. So it's, wow. it's like a like a marbling. Yes, like a it's marble pretty. Cake. It's it's very different. I, I, I was like, it's very different. It's very pretty. And the water is well, warm. But I know they all live in like the high rise condos. Yeah. And, um, and and one thing that you can see from those high rise condos, some of them have like mountain views. Yes. Yeah. And some of them have ocean views. Yeah. Um, and then if you get if you get one just right, just right, like on the corner, you like bam, bam, you got the mountains yeah. over here, you know. Yeah. You got yeah, it really is. Okay, so I can't wait to see the pictures, and I'm gonna put them on the on the um, end of this um, this interview. But I'm gonna ask you one more question, and it's the girl question. Okay, uh -oh. and so the girl question is the critter factor. What's the critter factor? Uh, I haven't really, well, wait, there was one critter. I haven't really seen like a lot of bugs or anything like that because I am, I'm a acro, I'm arachnophobic. I cannot stand spiders. Spiders, yeah. I am just, oh no, I can't deal with them. But, um, even after coming into our place, after being shut down, there were yeah. no, no critters. No critters. No, no geckos? Uh, I haven't. I saw some outside in the front yard, but I did see. One got in the house, Tito. No. Hmm? No, he didn't. Did one get in the house? He was out in the street. I, I didn't tell him. He was in the house? Yeah. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did see I was in the backyard doing sweeping or something and this twig moved and it was just a little twig about maybe this size but it was a snake and, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like ah, yes! 
Um, he saw me, I saw him, and we both went <laughs> to different, but that that was it. But she hadn't no. she hadn't seen a real snake. She hadn't seen a real snake. That was a real snake. Oh, you mean a big snake? A, yes. a full, it was a baby the one snake. One that can eat like uh, dogs and horses and things like that, okay? Well, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. My thing is geckos, okay? Yeah, if they out of all the things, and I, 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 I'm working on it, everybody know, I'm a work in progress, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> but we don't get them in the house, thank God. We get a couple on the uh, uh, carport at night. Okay. Um, you know, when the sun go down, that's the other thing I like about the geckos around here. They know they place. They don't come out in the daytime when I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> they, usually, they usually just come out at night. And the whole thing with my mind is like shy. They've been there the whole time. So it's like, as long as I don't see them, I'm good. But when I see them, I just got this little thing with them and, and I've been trying to work with them. But it seems like a silly question, but it's a lot of stuff that women do think about. You yeah. know, um, women do think about when they move into warm climates. And so um, is there, do you, are you guys going to drive in Panama? Tito knows Spanish. Do you know any? On a scale of one to 10, I am probably a three or four. Or something like three. He would probably say zero. But <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> she probably thinks you're right. better than you think you She's are. about a four. When she okay. relaxes, and then she drops right down to a two <laughs> or a three when she gets nervous. Yeah. Yes. No, but yes. I, I'm trying. And I've gone several some places by myself. And, and um, uh, you know, I, the thing I, I do know is know how to say thank you and hello. Mm -hmm. You know, and or do you and do you speak English? You mm -hmm. know, I'm listening. Yeah. Look, disculpe, 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 lo siento, ahora, yes, I'm gonna get me some help. I'm gonna get out your way and keep myself from getting hurt. But I, disculpe, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> That's my word. That's my oh, word. Yeah. Word, yes, please. I, I like to tell them this is my Spanish is like Sesame Street, you know. But I, I'm learning, I, I, I gotta work on my vocabulary, but it does help to know something. Um, Panamanians do reach out and try their best, even if they don't speak any English, yes. they try. And then if they're if you're willing to try, they're willing to try, yeah. I'd say for the most part, that's what I found. Hmm. But uh, Google Translate. yes, Google Translate is your <laughs> friend, baby. Yes. Imagine how it was without. And and honestly, I give mad props to people that come out here. I am spoiled. Okay, mm -hmm. because Alfredo handles handles all the heavy hitting. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> you know, and but sometimes, like, you know, the women in, in Panama, sometimes they're a little laid back, seem a little cool to me. Okay. And we was in the store one day and we was trying to get something done. And, you know, I'm a communicator. That's what I do. And that's what it, it hurts my heart not to be able to communicate with people. That There's some people that I meet and I'd be like, I know I would really dig her. You know, like yeah. we would really be friends if it wasn't so hard to talk, you know. And uh, we were in the store and he was asking for help. And, you know, he, my husband's very friendly and he, he's asking. And her response was, in my mind, because I didn't know any Spanish back then. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, that's how she seemed to me. And then she said, I don't know about I said, I said, I said, I said, what she say? <laughs> she said, and he said, Cheyenne, please, she's trying to help us. <laughs> <laughs> So it is like, oh my God, the Spanish, the Spanish is difficult. It's like it go one in, in one ear and out the other. I've tried different things. I'm getting ready to start with a tutor. Um, and what I found too is that I can deal better with like one-on-one -on -one conversations. I have been Spanish as I'm, it's full disclosure, full disclosure here. I got to bring my jersey girl out for that one. Spanish has, I have found myself in tears. I've just been so overwhelmed with mm -hmm. the Spanish that, I mean, I just felt like, you know, when you go to, for me, it's the big crowds. It's when everybody's talking, different accents, mm -hmm. different conversations, and then my mind just gets like, where I can't pick up nothing, you know, because I just start listening for the word that I know. 
you know, but when so many people are talking, I have become like overwhelmed. And just like, you don't want to see me antisocial because that ain't me at all. You know, and I'm sitting there and I'm on my phone and I'm just thinking, I just want to go so bad. You know, and I don't want my family to have to speak English because I'm there because my spa my family speaks English and they've always spoken English to me. So I've asked them to, you know, speak more Spanish. <sighs> so yeah. that's, that's the part. But I, I'm I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. And I'm only here once a month. Like I come every month to Panama, you know, mm -hmm. to to see my husband and to and to do my business, which that brings me to your beautiful sister locks. I'll be looking forward to seeing you, my sister. That's right. I'm, yes. I will be catching you. I sure will. We will awesome. Up. Awesome. I'll be back February 2nd um, after this trip right here. But okay. um, that's it. You February 3rd. You'll be back February 3rd? I'll, I'll make an appointment for, for February oh, 3rd. Okay, okay. 22nd, February 22nd is oh, when 22nd. I'll be back. But we'll we'll hook up. And we'll get that together. So Tito are, are, and uh, Francis, are y'all y'all you you gonna drive? You gonna get a car in Panama, or I'll you gonna ship you your car? About that, when I left Panama, I was driving. Okay. And there were approximately like um, one million less cars, <laughs> so traffic was not as bad as it is now. Mm -hmm. And then I found out the word for traffic is tranque. Tranque. Tranque is just. Tranque crazy yeah. it is crazy um la has nothing on panama in terms of uh, uh dc uh, either okay mm -hmm. it is just uh, new but york is close but panamanians not are nice people everybody says panamanians are nice people and they go out their way to help you and all this other stuff until they get in that car <laughs> they, they, say that the they say that the happiest like, people you know what? in the world you know, man, it doesn't show in there in the car no, it, it's like, you know what? I am going to get in front of you one car length or I'm going to die trying, <laughs> okay? And, and it's just like, it's just, it's so when I first, mm -hmm. the first few times I came, I said, I'm not driving. Thank goodness for Uber. Mm -hmm. Or like they say in the canals on Uber. Mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for that. So, but then I had to take her to immigration in Panama and we could not figure out how to get there. So we rented a car and I drove and I just said, you know what? I am going to, I'm going to get killed or be killed. He did fine. And I, and we just went boom, 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 went through. And I was so happy to get home. I, was so sleep. I needed a long nap after I got home. Okay. But. That's how it goes. Yeah. It, it, you, you, it can be done in the city. Take your time. Yeah. Drive around everywhere else and, you know, kind of get a little bit lower, lower key. But yeah. the city is another level altogether. It is. Yeah. I would say go to the city on Sunday. Yes. Go to the city on Sunday because then you kind of get, you know, and you kind of get a little better lay of the land. I initially, when I came here, I said, I, I will never drive here. But see, mm -hmm. when we came, we used to come to the house like like one month out the year, we would be here because we just moved here in 2018, bought the house in 2012, right? Mm -hmm. And we would be here like two weeks at a time, um, twice a year. And I said, I ain't never driving out here. And at first, Alfredo didn't drive, but then I think we had a problem getting somewhere and he was, we just said we rented a car. And then after that, you know, he was driving and he does really good at it. But Lord, my heart be in my feet. <laughs> it's crazy sometimes. And, oh, and you have, and so when I get it, so what happened for me was I was trying to put a little decorations up with the house. And that's what we do a little bit at a time. That's how we did. And, you know, our schedules are different. And it was like, I didn't want to spoil his time away from the States, but I'm like, will you get your tail up so I can you take me down the store and I can do my little shopping so I could do my little stuff that I wanted to do. And then I don't want to, he would want to do it late in the day. And I, I wouldn't, I said, give me the keys. I'm going to drive. I'm finna drive. <laughs> and from then on, I drive in Bricenta Golf Norte. I could drive to my parents' house. I just don't mm -hmm. want to drive nowhere else if I don't have to. But I guess as I move here and I'm more, I'm, I'm here more, 
you know, because I my husband is retired, I am not. We still have the salon in the United States, and we have a uh, sister lounge studio here. But um, so I just decided to do it. But it, I think you need to be careful. You need to be you need to be careful. And and here in Panama, it seems like to me, if I could describe the driving, it seemed like to me, it's like if you don't have to hit your brakes, you the man. <laughs> that's it and it's like they it's all of it i'm gonna give you a, a word of advice on, on that too i think um any car that's imported into panama they remove the turn signal stick nobody uses it oh my god i mean you just drift from side to side so i figured out one defensive way to keep yourself safe when you're not used to use your turn signals mm -hmm. absolutely and you you put on you put on your blinkers and 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 they see that light flashing they go they they go yes yeah they they want to speed up and then they say oh this must be somebody that's not from him yes yes and they and they get careful they you gotta, get you gotta they, um your turn signal when I get to I say out well when I when I get to the I put on my gangster face. You know, when mm. I'm driving, I pay attention. I, I mean, I, I'm never off my guard because anything can come at you, right? Yeah. And 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 I think that what it is is as they're approaching a stop sign, they're looking to see what's happening, you know, how how much is happening on the other side of the stop sign because they're ready to just roll out. And they yeah. expect you to do that. So mm -hmm. when you stop, you know, in the, in the States, you stop, look to the right, look to the left, and then go, no. Yeah. Right, and then pull out. It's not like that here. But I feel like you just got to get into the flow. And yeah. I, I think that it's another way for you to be independent in a new country. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end here um, uh, because I think we could just go on for a long time. But I think folk will enjoy this interview because of the little things that came up that may not seem like a whole lot to us now that really will to them. I'm gonna put some pictures of your house on the end of the um in the end of the um of the video. And I just want to ask you, um, do you have anything you'd like to leave us with before we part? Any any parting words? I just want to say if you're thinking of coming down here, um, I believe you will you will enjoy it. You'll fall in love with it just like all of us have. But you need to keep an open mind when you come. This is not the States. And any foreign country is not. Just be open and adaptable. Mm -hmm. And if you can adapt, it's fine. And remember that PT time, which is Panama time, mm -hmm. Noah, then CP time. <laughs> oh, so be patient. PT time makes CP time look good. Yes. <laughs> and I'll leave you with this. Um, Panamanians, Panamanian bureaucracy loves the stamps, the notary publics, and paperwork. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yes. Whether it's turning on the lights and changing it to your name, getting the water, you're done. Yes. The clergy or edament started. Everything is stamp, stamp, prove, prove, copy, copy, this, that, bam, 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 come back and do this. <laughs> And after lunch, and so that you need to see <laughs> is not coming back till <laughs> next week. And there you have it. That is exactly how it goes. Even the legal process for me, I worked for attorneys my whole life. And you know, so I'm, I'm I'm familiar with a lot of processes and and details and and things like that. So when we came, when I went to get my uh, my residence, you know, there were certain things I had to do, and I actually just used a runner that I used to use at a firm I used to work at, and he got all my stuff um, apostilled and everything like that because I, you know, that was just a lot easier for me to do. But I noticed that when I got back to the uh, to the lawyer's office, and our lawyer was great, by the way, um, Giovanna uh, Rodell, and she's at Prime Solutions. They had me fill out these papers. And I thought to myself, why would you do this to me? Why mm -hmm. would you make me fill out? It was a lot of papers that I had to fill out. 
my whole thing was, why wouldn't you just send that to me email last week? <laughs> so yeah. I could have just bought it in with me. I could have filled it out, had all the information that I needed, you know, for it. And bam, come in and let's have our meeting. And so it was little things like that, that I just had to keep thinking, you know, like my cousin said, you know, this is Panama. Yeah. And the, mm -hmm. if you think you could do all this in one day, well, why not? Because you got to come back tomorrow. That's why. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's right. Because you gotta come why. back tomorrow. Yana. Yeah, no. Or the so, next day. <laughs> huh? Or, or the Wednesday. Next day. Oh yeah. After, after three days and, in a row. And everything. And you know what else made me uncomfortable about our transaction here? When I asked a question that when Al had to translate a question that I had to like the sales agent or whoever, too many times the answer usually started out well with usually. Uh, most times or yeah. no problem yeah. and I'm like where do it say that I'm, I'm just saying that's good we good but I'm just trying to say I said Al is it in the documents yeah. because I'm sure that that's kind of universal you know mm -hmm. a handshake and a promise it's not going to hold up in court mm -hmm. and so you need to understand what's in those documents and not just assume that you're going to you assume you're going to get on the winning end of usually and most times so mm -hmm. so anyway listen thank you guys um you for everybody. coming on i can't i hope y'all invite us to your house because <laughs> yeah. we want to come visit <laughs> we want to come visit oh, yeah. oh come on come on come on <laughs> we'll invite you to ours how about that so y'all yeah. get to because we have to go i don't know if y'all heard Chuletas. <laughs> chuletas, chuletas, or, or, or chuletas, a arroz can pollo. We can do it all, mm -hmm. man. The totals. Yeah, My so husband well. is a really, yeah. really yeah. good cook. He all is. Right. He is real. We have black. We have black beans and rice and uh, oh my god! I think he said. I said what? Is, I said what is this? He said. I think he said pigtail. <laughs> I said okay. It's yeah. good though. Wow. Anyway, oh, man, so we, uh, we we eat a whole lot of stuff. So I'm, I'm I know I'll yeah. meet y'all soon, and I know I'm gonna meet you. You gonna come out here to Brisa C, and then when you oh, when yeah. you bring her to get her hair done, you and Al, it's gonna be best buds. Trust yeah. and believe, y'all gonna be best buds, huh? I get friendly with Sauce. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, hey, all right, we got you covered. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know my favorite thing. One of my favorite things is um the ceviche. Oh, I nice. like the nice. ceviche here with the yeah. homemade hot sauce. The yeah. homemade hot sauce, my sister-in-law yeah. yeah. makes, and my husband makes it too. It's really good. Barbadian, Bajan hot sauce. Is it yes. yellow? Is it yellow? It is yellow. It's like oh, yellow, yeah. like really bright yellow, orangish. Yeah. She she hooked it up. It's it's yeah. amazing. It's it, oh oh god. Okay, I, I gotta go eat y'all. So mm -hmm. all right, okay. so I'll see y'all later. All right. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the amazing couple of Tito and Francis Cisnet. And I'm so glad that I got a chance to uh, interview with them. And I know, Lord help me, y'all. You know I be trying to keep my interview short, but it just be so much fun. So, if you haven't had a chance to come over and um, join us on our um, Black Expats in Panama Facebook group, please do so. We would love to have you. Um, we still have a couple of trips left. Uh, I'm sorry, a couple of seats left, nine seats left on our second trip to Panama in May. We got one leaving on May 1st and one leaving on May 28th. And it is Black Expats Explore Panama. We will stay closer to the um, closer to the, the city region, but you get to see some mountains, areas to live, city, um, suburbs, because you know I'm bringing y'all to Brisa and beyond. And you're going to get to see some water. So uh, we're going to we're going to pack it in. We're going to have a great time. And of course, we will always add some uh, black culture to this because that is what we do. OK, um, look out for more from Black Expats in Panama and our collaborations as Black Expats worldwide. If you guys have been seeing that, I'm telling you, we is planning our work and working our plan, baby. Y'all have no idea the things that we have in store for you. And I'm just so excited. And I can't wait till we can release um, 
more and more information about that. Um, the, the company that they talked about was Inside Panama, highly recommended. Um, I know the owners and uh, we collaborate and work together on things too. And so, you know, it's a gas bomb, baby. It's, it's good. So I just want to thank you guys for listening and let you know too that I'm trying to separate the Locks Forever YouTube page from the new YouTube page that I've created, which is um, Black Expats in Panama. So I'm going to put the link to, I'm still putting videos in most places, I'm going to put the link to the new page, Black Expats in Panama, and I just ask that you go over and subscribe so that for y'all that don't want to see my sisters talking natural hair business and, you know, uh, videos concerning hair, you know, you'll be able to just get the Panama videos that you want, but just bear with me, you know, we're working on it, we're planning our work and working our plan, and again, I just want to say thank you. And, um, and you can follow us now on Instagram as well at Black Expats in Panama underscore TM. Yeah, that's right. Trademark, baby. So um, we look forward to seeing you there too and just continuing to grow and be great. There's a lot going on in the United States. Now is the time to consider doing something different. Yeah, I said what I said. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.